Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here. We're starting this video off with a blooper because, well, I am human after all, and, well, it's kind of funny in a not very funny way. Do consider liking and subscribing to the channel, though. Oh, no. Let's do Karazai the Scarred. Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting Karazai the Scarred. Yes, it is another dragon. It is another awesome, awesome dragon. And I am very, very, very excited to paint him for you. And, well, let's get into it. So, he has been primed in Wraithbone, and the place we are going to start is on the inside softer belly. So including the inside of the wings, the underside of his torso, end of his tail, and the inside of his legs and arms and all that good stuff. So the colour we're going to make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde. And this is because we want this to be very, very, very pale and very, very, very thin. And what we want to do is we just want to pick a place to start. Now I'm going to start here on his tummy and we're just going to start painting this all over these areas. Like so. Now I am using a medium layer brush and that's because I want lots of control over how much paint I'm using. And I don't want this very runny mixture to get out of hand. But what I would recommend is that you definitely have the box art on hand See where you want to place all of this. It's essentially up to there, but it doesn't matter too much if this does overlap. If anything, that will help contribute to the overall final effect because there is going to be a fair amount of blending on this one, just like there was on Crondis. If you've seen that video, if you haven't seen that video and you want to know how to paint Crondis, you can find it here on YouTube. But for now, we're painting Karazai. So we just want to get this all over. Like this. And then we'll come back. So with all that skeleton horn applied, we are going to now move on. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, he's already moved on, and we didn't see it on camera. Well, that is because <laughs> my camera crashed, as I'd already did this, and then the footage didn't save. So, right, good job I caught it now. So what we're going to do is we are, as I say, we're going to be replicating this. Now, this is going to be our top colour, our kind of brightest part of the sort of darker reddy brown of him. And the colour is roughly... Eight parts contrast medium to one part gore grunter fur. And as you can see, what I've already started doing is painting this all over Karazai. And we're going to get this all over his back and all over the areas we haven't done. Just 
with the skeleton hoard. Just like this. As you can see. You just want to go around like this, taking your time. Make sure you work it into all those scales. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to darken it down. Now the colour we're going to use is now half the amount, so about four parts contrast medium to one part gorgon to fur. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to start picking out all the darker areas of flesh. So what we're going to do Let's start down here at the foot. We can start painting it all the way up like this. Coming her up to around about there. Like that. Just make sure we do the rest of the foot as well. Like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush. And then when the two colours meet with a clean brush, we just paint over the edge. All that transition, I should say. Like that. Just to smooth it out just a little bit. Like that. And then we're going to move on to the next bit. So... That'll be this bit here. So with that done, it's now time to start adding some real dark patches into him. And the colour we're going to do this with is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Saigor brown. What we're going to do is we're going to start painting this over everywhere that we want to be this nice dark ready brown. So this is going to be areas such as the foot. Or feet, I should say. Coming all the way up. Many of the large, harder scales. Like that, and then similarly, once again, whenever you get to an area where you want it to be kind of blending through, you want to just take the excess off. So for example, just up here on the shoulder, what we want to do is we want to put this Saigor brown mix coming down there, like that. Then we also want to kind of bring it down to around about that row of scales like that. Somebody down this way as well. Like that. And then we wash the brush. And then once again, we just, the clean brush, just brush over that section. 
to lift it off and smooth out the transition. Like that. So you just want to go around doing it like this. Similarly, yeah. Smooth out. And smooth out. Still continuing that same side or brown mix, I realized I hadn't actually specified what we were doing on the back here. Now it is slightly different to what we're doing. Well, it's the same technique, but it's slightly different to what we're doing with the rest of the model. And well, what we're doing here on the back is we're going to be filling in all of the flesh with our side core brown mix. Like so. like that but when it comes to doing the crackling between the wings we're not doing the whole of the wing no what we're doing is we're doing what we're doing on the rest of the skin so we're going to take our side all brown and we're going to fill in that kind of area and that kind of area coming all the way down like this and we're washing the brush and we're just smoothing out the transition with a clean brush. Like so. We'll take a small amount of this. We'll just run it along there and along there. And then once again, smoothing out the transition. A bit of a dark patch there, which we'll deal with later. Like that. So you just want to go around like this. We also want to be picking out all of these scales, I should mention. See, that's been caused by letting it run down and then not paying attention to it.
And so with that done, all the way around, as you can see, Kara's eye is very much looking very, very good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Cygore Brown just on its own. I'm gonna use this to paint in all of the darkest arm kind of scales in areas such as like that. So for example, just here, Got this line. Including these. Like that. And then similarly with a clean brush. Just smooth out that transition just a little bit. So with that done, you should have a Kara's eye that now looks somewhat like this. He's looking pretty awesome. However, we've just got one last shade to add to all of his skin. And this is the kind of reddy color that he has. It's a little bit paler than this kind of reddy brown. And this is just gonna be a hint that we're gonna place in various areas around him. Now the color we're gonna make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to three parts Gorgon to fur to one part Blood Angels Red. What we wanna do is we just wanna pick out little areas to add this over. So this is gonna include areas such as the back, just around here. And again, we are just gonna kind of blend it out a little bit, but we're just gonna add this here over this little section, just like that. And then wash the brush. And then just soften out that transition. Like that. I'm just going to add some to his back muscles. Then like that. And we'll bring some down this back part just here of the arm. And again, we'll just soften up that transition like that. Then what we're going to do is we're also just going to add a little bit of this towards the ends of his fingers. Like that. And then we'll just add a little bit of it towards the tip of his snout. Wash the brush and soften. Like so. You just wanna go around picking out these areas as you please. And then we'll come back. One thing I forgot to mention is that we're going to be using that same mix on the horns that we haven't done yet. So we've got this large one here and the shorter one there. And we've got the same on the other side. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add it about halfway. Like that, wash the brush, and then soften out the transition.
So with that done, just whilst we wait for it to dry, what we're now gonna do is gonna work on Karazai's markings on his wings. Now, the color we're gonna be using for this is Wildwood. And effectively, it kind of goes along each of the spines. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take a small amount of this on our brush, first of all, and we're gonna start right here in this corner. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this Wildwood and then just draw out a triangle, a sort of wavy triangle that goes like this. Like that. And then we just wanna block that in. Like so. Then what we can do is we can also add a little spot there and then a little dot just above it as well. And you can add little ones either side like that and like that. Now I would obviously recommend that you keep the box on hand for this to help you with where you should place it. As I said, it's effectively along each of the spines. And then there's the occasional little tiny one in the middle. So for example, just here. Like that. Yeah, a little dot above it, just like that. Like so. So you just want to go all over like this. Again, following the box art. Come back. So with that done, as you can see on both sides of the wings, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part cycle brown mix. And then inside each of the large triangles, we're basically just gonna paint this over the top. Once again, still sticking with our Saigor brown mix, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this towards the tips of our darker horns, well, of our unfinished horns, and we're gonna add it here, and here, like that, and then once again, we're gonna wash the brush, and then 
I'm just going to smooth out that transition. Like so. And so lastly, just to finish off those horns, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown on its own. I'm going to add this to the very, very tip. Like that. And then obviously, once again, with a clean brush. We're just going to smooth out that transition. Like that. So with that done, his horns are now, well, mostly there. And well, Karazai himself is mostly there. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all of those scales to the next level, and then we're gonna get to the, the inner bit as well. So just hold your horses. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some dry brushes to highlight. Now the color we're gonna be using first is Death Claw Brown. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna use this as a dry brush over the top of all of his reddy brown scales. like this. Now we're just being quite gentle here so as to avoid any big streaky accidents but ultimately at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. As we can always just neaten it up again if we need to. And if anything having a few scratchy bits on him will add to the effect. So you just want to take it steady, like this, and get it all over that fur as well, which I don't know if I've mentioned, has been painted with cycle brown at the same time as all of the dark scales. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a really, really gentle dry brush of Screaming Skull. And we're going to do this over the sharpest parts of the model. And the scales, like that, whereas on the on the body, the softer bit. I want to go reasonably heavy here.
And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some pallid witch flesh and we're going to dry brush this over the very soft creamy bit. So with that done, Kara's eyes, scales, horns, wings, back, they're all now finished. There's just the claws, his face, and his scar to do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the scar first. And the colour we're going to use first is Wraithbone. And this is just to tidy it back up. So basically what we want to do is just take your time. But what we want to do is we just want to fill in the scar with the wraith bone, like so. And so with that done, what we then do is we take some Volupus Pink and we're going to fill in the scar once again. It doesn't matter if you overlap a little bit here. as that will just add to the effect. And so with that done, the scar's looking pretty good, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some fulgrim pink I'm going to use this to highlight around the edges of the scales. Around the scar. Just like this. So that fulgrim pink applied the scar is finished, but what we need to do is we need to do the damaged eye. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some wraith bone and we're just going to colour in the eyeball. Like that. I should point out that we did the fulgrim pink over the top of the other eye as well. Well, for lupus pink and then for grim pink highlights over the top of the other eye. And so with that wraith bone applied, we then take a tiny amount of talisar blue, not very much at all. I'm going to paint this over the top. Just 
just like that. And so with that Talisar blue applied, we then take some blue horror. And we're going to add this as a highlight around the outside of the eye. Just like that. Make it look nice and glassy. And then finally, just to finish it off, we take a small dot of white scar. And we add that at the top. Like that. With that eye done, what we now do is we come over to this one and we're going to take a small amount of Flash Gets Yellow and use this to paint in the eyeball. Like that. And so with that Flash Gets Yellow applied, what we're then going to do is take a really tiny, teeny, tiny a little bit of, of Black Templar. I'm going to add this as a pupil. Just towards the front. I'm going to add it as a little line. Just like that. So with those eyes done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on his mouth and the colour we're going to use is Saigor Brown. And basically what we want to do is we want to colour in the whole of the tongue first and foremost. But we also want to get in here and do the inside of his mouth as well. Like so. And then what we also want to do is we want to pick out each of the teeth. Along the jawline. Like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some snake bite leather. I'm going to use this to paint in the teeth. Just like this. And with that snake bite leather applied, what we then do is take some screaming skull. We use this to pick out the teeth once again, just avoiding where that snake bite leather is settled. And so with those teeth all done, it's now time to take just a little bit of scrag brown and use this to highlight the tongue. Like that. With that done, Kara's eye's face is now finished and it looks really, really good. <laughs> I'm very pleased. So all that is left to do on him before we do the base is all of his claws. Now he's got his ones on his legs and the ones up here on the 
wings. Now the first color we're going to be using to do these is Basilicanum Grey. And basically what we just want to do is we just want to coat this all over the top. Don't worry if you've got splodges on these. You won't need to neaten that up. Because these claws are in fact going to be black. Do just make sure though that you get all the sides. Just like this. And so with that Basilicatum Grey now applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. I'm going to paint this over the top of all of those claws. And so with that done, what we then do is we take some Dawnstone and we use this to highlight our claws. So with that done, Karazai the Scarred is now finished. And he looks absolutely cracking and awesome. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is going to move on and paint his base. Now, the colour we're going to be using first is Wildwood. I'm going to be using this over all of his soil. Just like this. So with all that wild wood applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey. We're going to use this to paint in all of our stonework. Just going for quite a creepy mystical ruin for this one. And so with that Griff Charger Grey all applied, what we're then going to do is take some Agaros Dunes. I'm going to use this on the flattened grasses. Scattered about the model.
So with that now done, it's time to fill in the rest of this negative space. And well, the texture paint I'm gonna be using for this dragon is Astro Granite Debris. Now it might look a little bit weird next to the, uh, the wildwood uh, soil on the base, but don't worry. We are gonna be shading this Astro Granite Debris to tie it all in together. But for now, it's time to just get this all over. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Basilicanum Gray, and we're now gonna put this all over the top of our Astro Granite Debris and our Wildwood. And this will just blend all of it together quite nicely. As you can see, I also added in a little bit of gravel as it was drying, just to break up the vast expanse on this base. And this modeling gravel is available from most good hobby stores. If you wish to copy the effect. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to dry brush all of it with some turret and skull. Now we want to avoid where possible the stone work, but it's okay to get a little bit of this on there. No biggie. So that tyrant skull applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some long beard grey. I'm going to use this to dry brush the stonework. Very little gentle one, just create a little bit of variation on that base. Now what we can also do is we can also add a little bit of this long beard grey, just in little patches around the base as well. And there we have it. Our second dragon, Karazai the Scarred, is all finished. And my goodness me, this one was just as much fun as Krondis to paint. And, well, it has its own challenges. Those markings on the inside of the wings, for example, really interesting to do. But actually a lot of fun, because they're quite messy. It's not like it's, you know, painting tiny hammers on cloaks. Which, you know, no one has time for. <laughs> Which is your favourite? Do let me know down in the comments below. And, well, there you have it. Bask in his dragony glory. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. 
Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.